It is with great joy that uh, we welcome Pastor Vinny here today from uh, I guess I want to say from the streets of our region uh, and uh, you'll hear more about that uh, but I wanted to uh, invite uh, Jerry uh, Moran to come forward and share some a little background and specifically some specifics uh, about uh, everything that's been accomplished through the vision ministry. So Jerry, if you can come and then introduce uh, Vinny to us. Thank you. Let's see if I can handle this mic. Can you hear me all right? Good. Um, about two and a half years ago, uh, about the time that the pandemic started to take its effect on the Bay Area here. Uh, a couple of us got together and tried to figure out something we could do to help the homeless. Um, we sat in our backyard and talked about different things, brainstorming, and decided that we were very capable of putting together <coughs> some bag lunches that could be distributed to the homeless camps around the city. Uh, but how to do it, where to do it, uh, was a challenge. It turns out that um, word got out that we were interested in a uh, contact of ours at the food bank, uh, put us in touch with Vinny, uh, and he said, Jesus, we really could use something like that. Uh, would you guys think you might be able to do 40 or 50 bags of lunches? So we thought, okay, let's give it a shot. So we had a connection at the food bank that allowed us to get access to uh, some staple things. We had some funding and, and we said, okay, we think we can do 50 bags. The first week we did 50 bags and the word got out and the second week we did 130, I believe it was. Uh, and it just grew exponentially from there. And uh, so I wanna give you a few statistics about how this came about and, and who was responsible for it and you'll be amazed at some of the numbers. <laughs> we began in June of 2020 it's been 31 months or 130 weeks since June of 2020. And we have, without fail, managed to put the bag lunches together every single Wednesday and Thursday for 130 weeks. On Wednesday, we do 60 or 70 bags for an Operation Dignity. They're a, a group that cater primarily to uh, homeless veterans, but they've expanded considerably. And they take these meals, meal bags to the uh, homeless camps and particularly the tough shed areas. <coughs> so um, during that time, Vision volunteers have provided a total of 26,000 meal bags. They're more than a lunch bag, they're actually like two meals in a bag, and I'll explain that a little bit in a minute. Uh, an unknown number of jackets, coats, blankets, socks, and shoes were gathered through the efforts of this congregation. More than 100 hygiene bags were turned over to the homeless camps as well. The 26,000 lunch bags were made possible because of 52,000 pounds of food donations from the Alameda County Food Bank. 52,000 pounds, can you imagine? And that food is picked up every Tuesday morning by two of us that shop there religiously uh, throughout the year. Uh, we also, because of funding provided to us from this congregation and friends, we're able to purchase 26,000 bottles of water, 26,000 paper bags to put these meals in, 26,000 wooden spoons, 26,000 napkins, and other commodities. And most importantly, the efforts of at least 66 people from this congregation and their friends. 66 people. To date, there have been at least 66 individual volunteers involved in the program many of whom are St. John's youth, thankful for them. Some are involved in making sandwiches and hard boiled eggs for the lunch bags. Some spend time packing lunch bags. Some do the shopping and gathering of the items needed to complete the nutritious bag meals. We're very grateful to Pastor Vinny, who has been with us from the beginning, picking up and delivering, the, distributing the majority of these lunch bags and all of the clothing and hygiene items every Thursday without fail, including Thanksgiving, for the last 130 weeks. 
Busy nights in operation on Wednesdays as well. The Wednesday team packed 70 lunch bags for Operation Dignity, as I mentioned earlier. So without the help and generosity of this congregation, this never could have happened. And we're so grateful. So um, now it's my pleasure to introduce Pastor Vinny, Vinny Panizzo, uh, please come up. This is the man of the streets, and he'll tell you his story and how grateful he is to all of you. Thanks. Hello, can everybody hear me? Okay, great. Um, I want to make sure everybody can hear me. Uh, thank you for having me back again this year. Uh, I see some familiar faces out there that I saw last time. Thank you so much for everything that you've been doing. Vision, I mean, God bless Vision. God bless this church. This church has come through for us for the mission, mission for the homeless, um, in more ways than any other church. Uh, and, and not only what Vision's doing, but when, when our van broke down, this church came through for us without hesitation. I think it was something like $1,200, Reverend Scott and everybody, uh, Jerry, and just got together and, and made sure that that van was on the road. That van has to keep moving because that means that people are getting what they need. And, and so I, I want to thank you. And, and uh, uh, Sally, uh, your, your, your efforts in coming up with that grant for us, I think it was $1,500. That was so helpful. I want to thank you for that. I mean, this is... This is a wonderful church. This is a wonderful con congregation. I, I am so proud of this congregation. I give thanks to the Lord. We all do at the mission. We give thanks for this church. It's a wonderful church, and I always feel so welcome here and everything that you're, you're doing for us. And it's really helpful. It's really needful. Um, the people are benefiting on the streets in a real way. So, again, thank you so much. Um, is there anything that you want me to talk about specifically? Would you like me to talk about my background in the Where are you from? Obviously, you said you're from Operation, and, and tell us a little bit about how you're a one-on-one operation and how you came to your role to do the difference between, say, the holy building. Right, right. Yeah, often is one-on-one. Uh, first, I'll say a few words about my background. I, uh, I came out here for, for school for graduate school, and uh, as a student at Berkeley, I, I, on my own, I began to read the Bible. And so um, I was surprised what I found in there, actually, uh, especially Luke chapter uh, six, um, when he talked about just giving, giving to all who ask, right? I, that, 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 that struck me as, as a stroke of, of genius. There was something really profound and powerful about that statement. So. Um, it had a huge effect on me. And living in Berkeley, there's always an opportunity to give. Someone's always asking you for something. <laughs> so um, it just sort of uh, snowballed from there. And I started to, to become more active among the homeless there. And I found myself being led by the spirit to just drop out of school and just, and just devote myself to, to serving God. And, and it did. And I... I lived even among the homeless. And, and so um, uh, it hasn't stopped. That was a quarter of a century ago. So uh, here we are to this day, by the grace of God and, and through the help of so many loving and caring people out there. Um, it's actually a ministry, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's have, it has support from, from different Bay Area organizations like uh, Bay Area Community Services and um, and other wonderful people who have donated so much. But um, as far as what we do and, and how we help people, uh, the mission tries to deal with, with the people who are most in need on the streets, people who have absolutely nothing, who are hungry, sick, um, without clothing. I, I see people walking around without shoes all the time, no shoes, no socks, uh, no shirt, in freezing weather, and, 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 and so, of course, we, we, we help everyone. Uh, we give people medication. We've taken people off the streets and, and gotten them into nursing facilities, um, into uh, board and cares. We've even managed through donations 
to, to rent a few houses and, and put people in there. We visit them every day. We, we stay in people's lives. That, that's our philosophy is that, is that we, we, we have to stay in people's lives and make sure that, that everything is going to work out for them. It's, we don't just give them food and, and, and clothing and say, well, have a nice day and I'll see you when I see you. But we, we, we try to get to know them personally and stay in their lives, right, to continue loving them. Right? What, what is love all about? Right? It, it requires us to devote not just our money, but also our time too, right? and to make sure that everything is working out for these people. Even the people that we've already taken out in the streets that are already in nursing facilities, I think the key to their success is to show up every day and, and be their family, be their brother or their father, whatever it takes, you know, their mother, to be there every day, see how they're doing. And some of these people at board and cares or in the housing that we've actually come up with, we, we have to give them their medication every day. It's an everyday thing. We're involved in their lives as if they're a member of the family. And really that's what it's all about. This isn't that what Jesus asked us to do, right? Is to, is to tr see people as your brother or your sister or your father. And really, you have to think of it this way. Uh, if that were my grandfather or my father or my son or my daughter on the street, what wouldn't I do for them, right? Think about that. That's, that's a pretty powerful idea, right? I mean, this is what Jesus is asking us to do, is to, is to see each other as members of the family. That's, that's what we're, we are. We're all brothers and sisters. And so we have to be equipped with that attitude, I think, when we see people. Um, but that's what I try to do as far as one-on-one. -on -one, I, I try to, to consider them as my brother or sister. And so um, with, with your help, that's what we're doing. Again, thank you so much. Look, it's, it's, it's Christmas time. And, we, and not that we should only have these thoughts in our heart around Christmas time. It should be all the time. But especially around Christmas time, we should be thinking about these things. I remember several Christmases ago, uh, there was a fellow in front of, I don't know, one of the supermarkets, could have been Safeway or something, but no shoes, no shirt. It was freezing. It was raining. Uh, and, and people, of course, are, are dashing in and out of the supermarket, hoping to make their holiday special and cozy for themselves. And, and, and people are like almost, you know, virtually like walk set, having to step over this guy, right? And, and it was really incredible to me that, that these are people who really believe that they're Christians, right? And, and, and they're completely ignoring this fellow who's in need. But really, and this, we have to take pause and consider this, who is it really that's lying there, right? Who is really lying there, right? Because remember what Jesus said, you know, I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. I was in need of clothing, and you clothed me. Right? I was a stranger, and you invited me, and etc. What you do unto the least of these people, you actually do unto God. Lo and behold, I mean, that's God himself on the sidewalk. I mean, these are the words of Jesus, unless these are just platitudes, unless they're not, you know, they're not true, but of course they're true. And if they are, then that's really how we have to think. That's really my brother. That's really my sister, right? And, and we're talking about our heavenly family, too. Isn't spirit thicker than blood? I mean, really, it's infinitely thicker than blood, is it not? How much more is that person, then, if he's of your heavenly family, right? Your, your brother or your sister, right? And especially if it's God himself. You know, that's, that's one of the beautiful things about God, that he's done that, that he's capable and willing to suffer along with his children out there in, in, in the human anatomies, right, to suffer along with us, right? I think somewhere in the Bible, maybe it's Deuteronomy, God says, and, and uh, or maybe it was Moses who said, I can't remember exactly, but in all of our afflictions, he was afflicted as well, right? So he's suffering along with us, right? That's how good he actually is, right? And so um, we have to remember this, that he's out there too. And so I know that this congregation has done so much. And more than so many other churches out there, and it's really unfortunate how they've neglected this, this really important aspect of the gospel, right? It's to take care of the other members of the body of Christ. 
And that's really what they are, too. Because so many churches, you really would be surprised what the attitudes, the prevalent attitudes are towards the homeless because they don't see them as like brothers and sisters. They don't see them as the body of Christ. But in fact, they are, hey, look, these people are made in the image of God, right? These are people who cry out to Jesus every day. I know, I've seen it. I'm a witness to it, to their tears and their cries to God, right? And so um, these are our brothers and sisters, okay? Yeah, I mean, there are people who are on drugs or alcoholics, and there are a lot of people with mental illness and things like that, but, you know, who are we to judge? I mean, you know, we're not going to throw the first stone, that's for sure. And so we have to remember that, that we too sin. But I don't have to remind you people of that because this, is, this, this congregation here is one of those churches that said, hey, we're going to do something about it. We're going to actually participate in the love of Christ. And you do. And you've done so much for us. And I just, I want to thank you so much. And I can't help but, but thank the Lord every day for what you people have been doing. Uh, you know, in reality. Right? It's not just, you know, your, 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 your good wishes and things like that. Which we need, of course. But it's actively involving yourself. Okay? This is so important. That's written in heaven. Okay? That goes down in the book of life okay, before the Lord. And so I, I really want you to feel good about that and what you have done. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Really, if you have any I want to say uh, an also an acknowledgement to um, Robert here and Ingrid, who is not here, but are uh, Vinnie's missionaries, uh, assistants, and uh, just a, a, fellow named George, a fellow named George. I think they deserve our blessings as well. Uh, these, are, these are good people. I feel like I'm standing next to somebody very holy, so it's appreciated. I feel really... <laughs> um, are there any questions that anybody has? I'd, I'd be happy to. You said that you uh, were able to obtain housing. What, what did you have to go through to do that? Well, um, we, we, we have been trying to get housing for, for the longest time, for years and years, we were trying to get housing. You know, we were hoping that that, that someone will come through and, and, and actually purchase us a house, right? Because uh, placing people has always been an anxiety and, and, and a concern for us. You know, what are we going to do? And, and a lot of prayer went into it because it's really hard to get people placed in nursing facilities where they belong. And, and what's worse is that there are some people who don't stay in nursing facilities. They don't want to stay in nursing facilities. They walk out. That's a reality, too. Like, what do you do with these people? You know, they feel trapped. They feel like they're prisoners there. So these are people who fall through the cracks. And so I really wanted to get housing. And, and even some of the people that I put in board and cares, um, a lot of times they get kicked out because of one issue or another. I know one fellow who we're helping right now in one of our houses who was kicked out of board and care because of his incontinence problem. It's like, what? You know what I mean? So he's out on the streets. And we found him in a wheelchair you know, filthy in his own mess, you know, and it's like, oh my God, what are we gonna do with this person? And so, um, yeah, we needed a house for a long time, and so through prayer, 
suddenly like donations just came in, right? Like, like a huge amount of donations, right? We've been praying for a long time. And so I, I said to, to, to my fellow missionaries, look, we, we have to rent a house. This is what we really need to do. We have to rent a house. Um, and so uh, we did. And, and we put people in there. And we don't have to worry about the ridiculous rule that these board and cares, right? Where, where they'll kick you out or, or neglect you. So, so we were so thankful about that. Really, it was just a matter of donations that came in, right? And, and the power of prayer. And, and so we're hoping to get, we have two so far. We have two houses that we're using to house people. People how many, that. How many people are using the house? Uh, how many people? Let's see. We, we have about, it's about eight, I think, all together, something like that. Yeah, which isn't much, but, you know, it's something. Other people we have in, well, like uh, residential hotels or in board and care type places or in nursing facilities and things like that. But we would like, I'd like to rent another house. I'd like to rent five more if I could. Yeah, but it was really a matter of like prayer and, 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 and the donate, waiting for the donations to come in, so. It was pretty instant. It was pretty instant, surprisingly. I, I had been an atheist for a long time. So uh, I, um, I really, I really, uh, I, I found anything to do with religion distasteful to me. It was really, and so there I was, I was a graduate student at, at Berkeley, and then suddenly um, someone introduced me to a book or other that, that got me interested in the Bible. And I was studying ancient history, so it, it wasn't that, you know, uh, it wasn't that surprising that I, that I might check out this ancient document here. Let's, let's look at it. I'd never looked at it before. I grew up Catholic, but um, I, I gave it a shot. I looked at it, and I started to read the Gospels, and, and then something struck me when I hit Luke. It was Luke chapter 6, I think beginning in verse 30, something like that. And, 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 and Jesus, the, the way he was... Uh, asking us to, to, look, just give. Give to everybody who asks. I, I thought that was, was so incredible because it just, it never occurred to me not to think about anything else. Don't worry about anything else, right? But there is something that he, he, he is inviting us to, to experience, and that is, you know, that, that, that generosity without hesitation. Right? And, and, I, and I was so taken aback by it, but something got inside of me, though, at the same time. And this is, this is really, it wasn't just an intellectual thing, right? It wasn't just an admiration for the words of Jesus that happened, but, but th it wasn't just an epiphany, but, but it was the Spirit of God that actually got inside of me, which, which sort of made me a prisoner to it, right? <laughs> I, I couldn't escape it, and then suddenly I found myself dropping out it was evident to me in the way that, that God can be evident in a person's life. And I, and I guess it's different for everybody. It's tailored for everybody, how he communicates to us. But it, God made it clear to me that you're not supposed to be here as a student. I, I, I need you somewhere else. And so uh, literally I was, I was in shackles, man, and I was dragged to the streets. <laughs> and, and so the homeless, we're there. There was plenty of homeless. There were plenty of opportunities to um, to experience the love of Jesus, and then that's what happened. I just there I was in Berkeley, and being in Berkeley, that's close enough to Oakland, and I started doing things in Oakland too. And more people, uh, being a witness to what I was doing, decided to help me, and it just sort of it sort of built up over the years. Yeah. I, I think it should be against the law, a law to, to have people on the streets. I think that, that it should be illegal, okay? And, and, and I'm not saying that um, to disparage the homeless, but to, uh, 
to, to make us aware that it, it, it's our fault, the community, the city, okay, the county, right, that, that it's criminal for us to allow this to happen, right? Especially when we're aware that, that so many of the homeless are mentally ill, right? And, and they have no one to help them. Remember, there are, there are no real mental facilities anymore in California, okay? Okay, they don't exist. There are no lockdown facilities, okay? So um, these are people who are living a nomadic existence on the streets. They have nobody caring for them, okay? And, and so if I had a magic wand, I mean, it, it just, there, it would be against the law to allow this to happen, right? There's, there, I know there's enough, there's enough funding out there. There has to be, right? But there's just not enough love. And that, that's the problem. There's not enough love. That, that really is, is the issue. That's the bottom line. And so um, that's, that's what I, I would like to see housing for everybody, especially for the mentally ill. Yeah. But that's what we're trying to do, too. You know, we're, we're trying to get people off the streets. That, that, that's really my, my main concern. I wish I could get everybody off the streets, but I can't. So I have to be very very choosy about, about who I am, you know, making efforts for. You know, I have to sort of triage them, you know what I mean? And see, you know, is this person really making it or not? Are they capable of, of going on, you know, on their own? And, and so I, I have, to, have to, by the grace of God and, and, and through prayer, you know, make those decisions because I, I just don't have the housing and I, I can't just get everybody off the streets. That, that, that's what I would do, yeah. Any other questions? Right now I'm sleeping in a tent behind one of the houses. Um, I have to be there because I, I, I have to change someone's diapers every day and, and give him his medication. I have to be there for him. He's, he's, uh, uh, he's uh, had a stroke, he's got one leg, his name is Albert. So I, 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 I have to be there and, and do that kind of stuff for him. That's why I'm, my, my tent is behind the house. But, um, in past years, it's always been some camp somewhere. I, I, I consider myself a missionary, so so I live among the people whom I'm serving, etc. You know, as missionaries live among the people that that they're uh, uh, being a witness to, you know, for the sake of Christ. So I've always seen it in that way, and it was pretty much right from the beginning that 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 the Spirit uh, had me in that capacity. Right? Um, hasn't been particularly pleasant. I can't say that I'm particularly pleased with that role which God has given me, but um, when it's a calling of that nature, I mean, it's really unavoidable. There's nothing you can do about it. It's like any calling, as, as the reverence calling, you know what I mean? It's not something that you could, you could, you could avoid, but um, yeah, so far, it's been, it's been a long time. I've, I've been living that way. Yeah, usually uh, it takes the social workers at the hospitals and things like that to get everybody on there. So, so stage one would be like, I gotta get this person in the hospital, right? You get them in the hospital first, then you, then you get, right, exactly. Then you get them in the system and everything like that. The social worker knows what to do. They get on medic all, all, all along that, that the insurance and, and yeah, that's usually how it works. And then we try to place them. And hopefully through, you know, through prayer and everything, it works out. It's, I always feel like it's like a transplant or something, you know, is, is, is it going to work out? Is that heart, you know, going to take? Exactly. Is it going to take? And sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't. It's like, oh, no. Now what do we do, right? Well, it's like, you know, you fall on your knees. And, and it, like any, anything on our walk with the Lord, you know, you, you're going to be led to a rock and a hard place. You're going to be led to a place where there is no earthly solution. Who's going to help me in a situation like that? I have this guy on my hands, let's say, who uh, does not want to stay in a nursing facility for one reason, or maybe he's getting kicked out of his board and care or something. It's like, what do I do with this guy, right? 
and, and he's mentally ill, let's say. You know, I can't ignore him. I have to do something, right? And that's when you're led to a position. And nobody can help you. Nobody seems to be able to help you, right? I, I talk to all kinds of people, but it's like, well, you know, what can you do? What can you do, you know? I mean, it's not your fault, but it's like, you know, you, you still feel, and the spirit within you is saying, you have to do something. You've got to do something, right? So through prayer. But you, you, you're brought to that place where, where you realize and you discover that prayer and, and God's answer to prayer is a reality, right? And I just let me say one thing. This actually is all in connection to your, to your question, right? The idea of answered prayer. My, my faith is based on a lot of things. And certainly in some of the prophecy, that, that's what it was based on in the beginning. That's what impressed me the most, some of the prophecy in the scriptures. But... The real foundation of my faith is an answered prayer. Somebody's been answering my prayers, right? And, and you know, that, that happens consistently. There, there is somebody answering my prayer. My prayers are being answered, right? And so when I'm led to a, a point like that where there is no, really no earthly solution, no one's helping me, and, and I need to help this person, God comes through for me every single time miraculously comes through. And so, yeah, that's, but that was a very good question. Thank you. So let's be encouraged. Let's, let, please let that encourage you because, you know, it is a reality, you know, because maybe we have a tendency to sort of um, go through the motions and it's sort of perfunctory for us, you know, the whole religious thing and everything like that. But, but, but God, maybe for, for some of us, needs to be more of a reality. You know, we need to discover how real he actually is, right? And I think the best way to do that is, is, is to be obedient to his commands, right? Because what did John say? John, in, in his first letter, he said, um, this is the love of God. He defines love. It's very definitive. He defines the love of God to do his commands, right? I mean, he doesn't define it in terms of emotion, you know, which is cool anyway. I mean, sure, many of us have emotional love for God, okay? But that's not the way John defines it, right? And I don't really think that's what agape, that word in Greek, which is love, right? I really don't think that's what it is ultimately, right? But I think it's an action, right? And that's how John defines it, though, right? This is the love of God to do his commands, right? And so when you start to do his commands, that's when you're going to see prayer really in action, man. You're really going to see it in action. When you're no longer really thinking about yourself, but you're thinking about other, other people, and then the love of God is manifest in your life, and suddenly you're walking in prayer, you're actually walking with the Lord in that sense, right? And then you pray, out, pray to him, you cry out to him. As you see the need before you and you don't know what to do, you'll see him come through for you every time because you're relying upon him, right? And that's really what he wants you to do is, is to rely upon him as your father, as any father would. And you're going to discover when you rely upon him, he's definitely going to come through for you. Absolutely. Absolutely, positively. But, but that's where my real faith is based, though, in, in answered prayer. Right? That, that's what really keeps me riveted and rooted and firmly based in, in the foundation of Jesus, of Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, that, that's really, that's really um, generous. Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, Mission for the Homeless. You, you, you could look up online, missionforthehomeless.org, right? That org? Yeah. I, uh, thank you so much. And there, there's a, I think you could do it through PayPal, or I can give you an address, actually, where you could send a check, however you're comfortable. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah.
you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. For our meditation, just let us take a moment and hold the homeless in our hearts and how we might be moved to be of assistance.